We're gonna head out. It's a uh, Saturday morning. It's almost eight o'clock. We got a Charleston freezer to go look at. I just got the keys from the boys. They said the freezer hasn't worked for three years. Right, I got the ladder set up, tools out. <clears throat> My flashlight here. Let's just start by plugging it in. See if anything happens. Ooh, that, uh, that was gnarly. A little sparkage. Okay. Presser fired off. You guys know the code on these. Customer code is zero alpha. I like to go this way. Alpha one. Check your set point. All right. So one thing I noticed before I even get get too started is the gasket area that seals around the lid, and then it's already been hooky loud. You can see the screws. Those aren't the right screws for securing it, so I doubt it's secured. Let's see. Yeah. So basically the lid's just sitting on there. All right, so I got the top off. There's our EVAP sensor. There's our cabinet sensor. Indoor blower motor's good. Go get some gauges and we'll gauge up on it. Cat tube's vibrating on the TXV. That's what I was hearing there. So we'll get that spread out so it doesn't rub. All right. There's a little dribble in there. I'll we'll probably go get the nitrogen. We'll nitrogenize it. Let's see. We got five pounds PSI. It's all that's in this system. So let's go get some nitrogen and nitrogenize it. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get lucky. We'll be able to pressurize it, find the leak, repair the leak, change the dryer. And I should have some probes on the truck that'll work. Hopefully I got a bunch of nitrogen in this tank. If not, I think I have another tank in the truck, but let's see what we can get in here. See if we can pressurize this dude. I brought some soap bubbles. Let's see if we can find the leak in this thing. I hear something, you guys hear that? You know it's gonna be that stupid condensate loop. Yep, it is. I'll just cut this loop out. discharge condensate loop there's the dead one I had some scrap soft copper on the truck so I just rolled it out let me get my bender and stuff the bends on this aren't super tight but I think I'm gonna use I got this one silver bender I like a lot about seven about a seven incher and this doesn't have to be super precise it's not rocket science about a seven banger you're in there about 45 somewhere's close just got to be close for government work you know now the next ones are a little more critical because that's how it's gonna fit in your pan, right? Well, wow, right at 12 inches, not too shabby. And 12 incher. Yeah. Now we can spin her around like that. 
You guys, did y'all watch the Tiger Tiger King on Netflix? I really like that guy Joe Exotic. I thought he got freaking railroaded by a freaking con artist. I thought Joe was fucking he was fucking hilarious. That guy was funny as shit. That'd have been a good uh reality show. If it would have went down. Yeah, he'd probably go like right there. Doesn't have to be super perfect. Try and get that like that. Get her to bite. What's nice with the copper is it's pliable and you can play with it. And then this one is basically going to come back at the same same spots. longer that'll work there's the owner he's pulling up right now let me turn I'm gonna turn the camera off so you know keep it keep it legit a little short but it'll work all right so that's gonna be my replacement it's like you know you got the one nut that hangs lower than the other it's just gonna be like that today went a little short but it's gonna work it'll work just fine it's just there to condensate the uh you know evaporate the condensate so there's a little swedger right here old school baby it's a working man swedge but i got a ton of different sensors back here now that's a Hoshisaki evaporator sensor, but I do have a bunch of sensors back here, different types, and um, some of these will be the same ohm readings as the uh, as the Charlesons. Might be these ones right here. All right, that's how we ended up. You know, we got the the lower hanging nut right there, but it'll be okay. So I got it in there, got the clamp screwed back on. Now I just got to uh, shine up the pipes and reconnect them. See what's going on there. We're kind of cut and shine, and we're all in there. Just got to braze those up. And I got to change out my dryer too. So I put the flux on the joint for sweating it out. It's my old trick. If you see my old videos, you'll see it on there. I'm gonna heat this up and sweat it out. Don't don't sweat the dryer out. You got to cut it out, or all that moisture is gonna go back in the system. Okay. okay. We can fit our new dryer. This thing's hot. Don't touch it. <clears throat> we got the condensate loop in. We got the dryer in. Pressurizing it. We'll do a pressure test. We'll get it on the vacuum pump. When it's on the vacuum pump, then we will uh, work on these uh, sensors. All right, I'm back to filming on my phone. Of course, GoPro battery died, but so I got my RHS catalog and I looked up my part number 60720, and that is the coil sensor. Uh, the cabinet sensor is the green guy. So, I'm going to look up the ohms value for the cabinet sensor and see if I can just use one of these that I have on my truck. Okay, so, I, was check I checked this one. So, they're the same ohm readings for the cabinet sensors. I think this one's reading between 9 and 12 K ohms. Let's see what we get here. 14.6. And then these ones off my truck. These are some generic ones I got on Amazon. Three, four, four, five, one, eight, four. You can get them for super cheap on Amazon. Yeah, right there. 11 K ohms. Close enough for government work. All right, so we're 35 minutes in. Our pressure hasn't deviated. Pressure test is good. Now I got to get it on the vacuum. All right, we got the vacuum going. Doing the one hose boogie. I got my charge weight in, it's 20 ounces, which is one pound, four ounces. Now you want to take your screws out of this channel on both sides, and then this top plate, all these screws. And that'll get you access. This putty will come up, so you get access for your wiring for your probe replacement, okay? Okay, that's the first channel's off. It's got a little hook on the bottom. Right, out. 
You get your defrost heater wires, your probe wires, your evaporator fan wires all come through this channel. Alright, got the new sensors in. It's got to restart it. That's close enough for me. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have the head pressure hooked up, so I'm only looking at my suction pressure and my evaporator temperature right now. Uh, I got the charge weight in, so right now we're looking okay. Okay, one more thing I want to do is, since this is all abused, I want to seal it up with the pookie tape. Now, it's not foil tape like you do on your duct. This is the pookie tape with the pookie in there. Okay, one thing I'm going to say about Trollson. In my opinion, they're the best commercial refrigerators for restaurants. And here's why. This fridge hasn't ran in three years. It was built in 2002. They had the digital controls with the two sensors all the way, way back in the late 90s. You can get to the sensors to change them out without killing yourself and having to dig in the stuff. They're built really good. They're rebuildable. And for the initial investment you, you make, they will last. Um, it's a working man's outfit. Right here, NorCal. Real, real working man. Real working man's outfit right here. <laughs> Ain't nothing that a beer can fix. Can, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully we'll see you on the next one.